Hi, uh, in this video we're going to see how we can create this kind of grid uh, in, in OpenGL in Jitter uh, using the jit.gen object and the jit.gl.mesh object. Um, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to be working with uh, gen as a way of manipulating coordinates that we can then send into the jit.gl mesh uh, as a way of drawing points. So something that is important to consider when doing this is that essentially what jit.gl.mesh is doing is that it's taking a matrix and it's interpreting the values that are in that matrix as coordinates where it should be drawing a specific point. So if we look at, um, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a patch and our patch is not going to look like this necessarily. Um, I'm going to make this smaller and maybe do the point size a little bit bigger. Um, if we see this point over here that I'm hovering over with my mouse, um, that point is there because we have, we're have we sending coordinates to that particular point. So each point in this image is where it is because it's being told to be there by a matrix that contains uh, coordinates. Now these coordinates are OpenGL coordinates, meaning that they go from negative values to positive values uh, in the X, Y, and Z axis and the center over here that would be zero. Um, so essentially we have to find a way of, of establishing how many points we want to draw and uh, where we want those points to draw and we have to find a way of manipulating the coordinates uh, so that they have their own specific points in space. Um, so that's what we're gonna do with this, this tutorial. So I'm gonna close this patch without showing. Uh, well, I showed it, but we're gonna build it from scratch again and see how that's built. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new patcher um, I'm lazy, so I have a, a snippet that has this basic settings for JIT.world. Um, so it's enabled, it's floating, so if I click wherever, it's just going to st stay hovering. Um, it's rendering at a high resolution, which is a feature that's enabled in uh, MacBook computers with retina displays, I believe, and it's anti-aliased. I'm also going to change the erase color, or I'm just going to mess it up. Uh, I'm going to change the race color to uh, to black just because I want there to be high contrast between the background and whatever it is that we're drawing. So if we remember what we were looking at before, we were looking at a grid, right? Um, and as I said before, we're going to be using jit.gl.mesh as a way of accomplishing that. And we're going to be drawing points. So a draw mode is going to be points. So the draw mode attribute in jit.jl.mesh is just an attribute that tells mesh how to handle the, the coordinates that you're giving it. So in this case, we're going to be drawing points. Um, we can change this later and it's going to have a really cool effect, but for now let's just draw points because we want to see very clearly where our coordinates are being placed in, in three-dimensional space. Um, so let's leave it there and I'm going to make the points slightly bigger, but I'm going to do that from a message, not from... Uh, not from a hardwired uh, attribute. Um, and this is just so that we can see them bigger. It's nothing particularly aesthetic or useful of this. I mean, it's useful, but it's not aesthetically pleasing. So the easiest way of, of, of thinking about how many points we can have is by using a jit.matrix. Uh, it's going to have three planes, and each single plane is going to correspond with each dimension in space. So the first plane is going to equal the x-axis, the second plane is going to equal the y-axis, and this, the next plane is going to equal the z-axis. It's going to have a float32 data type, and let's just hardwire the dimensions uh, as 10 by 10 for now. Uh, and we can change this by using the dim message. So I'm going to have two integers that I can send into the jit.matrix object, and I'm going to have number boxes here. I'm not going to particularly use this right now, uh, but we have it at our disposal if we wanted to. And I connected the same number, uh, the same number box to the two inlets just because I want this to be a square. But it doesn't have to be that way. Um, an object that's going to be very useful when you're working with with this kind of style is the jit dot um, cell block object because this will actually read out the values that your matrix has. Um, so if I send a bang right here, it's going to just say zero because our matrix is empty. And we can use the plane message to change between different planes, um, which again is going to be useful because if we think about it, the x axis of our GL uh, rendering scene is going to be stored in the zero plane. The, the one plane is going to contain the y component and the 
two plane is going to contain the Z component. So it's going to be a very useful source of information. Um, however, if I just connect this here and send the matrix, I'm just going to see a little point over there. So I'm going to increase the point size. And actually, I'm going to change the color and change the point size again and send it. Uh, I want it white just so that there's high contrast. Um, we're seeing what it seems like a single point in the center of the screen. It's actually many points. It's, it's 10 times 10 points. Um, but they all have the same coordinates, which are 0 in the x-axis, 0 in the y-axis, and 0 in the z-axis. So each single like cell in this matrix um, is a different point, and all of the different planes are a different piece of information that's attached to that point. So this, again, the zero plane is the x-axis of that particular point. The first plane is the y-axis and then the z-axis. Um, so what we have here is not a single point. We actually have 100 points, but they all have the same coordinates. Um, so it looks like it's a single point. So how can we actually find the way of processing these uh, matrix values uh, so that we can generate shapes? Well, I think that the simplest way for me was using the jit.gen object. Um, jit.gen is um, a very cool uh, working environment. Um, it looks like Max, but it's not quite Max because when you double click on jit.gen, it opens a, a patcher, but you can't access regular Max objects. You can only ac access gen objects. Uh, these, and they're not actually objects, they're operators, and these operators are visible in um, the gen tilde objects uh, and the jit.pix object and the jit.gl.pix and uh, now the just gen without the tilde. Um, these are new object. This is a new object that was introduced in Max 8, I believe. Um, so the 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 point of gen is that you're actually writing code that's going to be working on a cell by cell basis, let's say, on a pixel by pixel or well, in this case, we're working with cells, not with pixels, because these particular values are not being displayed on a screen. They're being used as information to then draw something else. Um, so what we're doing here is that we're writing kind of like essentially a program that will take in a matrix and have a series of instructions that is going to help us process the coordinates so that we can actually write them onto a screen. Um, it maybe sounds more complicated than it is, so we'll just dive into it and see what we can do. Um, so I'm going to erase what it has, um, and uh, something that's worth noting is that the output of jit.gen is going to be determined by whatever matrix we're feeding into it. So if we're feeding a, a three-plane float 32 10 by 10 matrix, the output is going to be the same. So that's why if we change the dim here, it's also going to change the dim here, even though it's being processed by jit.gen, because it's adaptive and it's changing accordingly. Uh, I'm going to take the bang from here. Um, so one object that's kind of useful is the norm object. It outputs the normalized coordinates of the input matrix. So what that means is that um, instead of outputting the specific values for each cell, it's outputting them normalized from a range of 0 to 1. So instead of outputting, let's say that our matrix currently has a size of 17 by 17, instead of outputting numbers that go from 0 to 16, it's going to output numbers that go from 0 to 1. This is useful because it essentially adapts to whatever dimension size that you might have and you don't have to change your code, which is super convenient. Um, so let's just connect this to the output and see what happens. So we can see how now we have essentially a plane. I'm going to change the point size so that it's a bit smaller. And we have a plane that slightly goes outside of the screen. But if I move it, I have jit.handle enabled over here. So if I move it, I can see that it's, it's, it's a full plane. And that the size of that plane depends on the, of, on the dimension of the matrix that I'm sending to jit.gen. Um, this is very interesting. And, and we can see why this is happening if we go into the jit.cell block over here. So I'm going to keep it small just so that we can actually see it. So the thing about the norm object is that it's actually outputting a vector, meaning that it's outputting uh, three values, even though it's just a, a single patch code, and each value is going on a different plane. So um, we have normalized coordinates from 
0 to 1 in the x-axis going on one plane, uh, normalized coordinates from 0 to 1 in the y-axis on a different plane, and the same on the z-axis on a different plane. And we can see that if we go over here. So if I'm in the 0 axis, we can see how I have uh, values that go from 0 to 1 in the x-axis. Like if you go down in the y-axis, it doesn't change at all, but it does change if we go from left to right in the x-axis. Uh, if I go on the, the plane number one, which is the y-axis, we can see how it increases as it goes down the y-axis, but it doesn't change in the x-axis. And right now we don't have any uh, z component, so it's just zero. Um, so the reason it's being displayed like this uh, is because if we see here, we have a value of zero in the x-axis and a value of zero in the y-axis. So that is this particular point that I'm hovering over. Um, then I go over here and we have a value of plus 0, 0.33 and then a value of 0. So that's going to be this value. Um, and so on and so forth. Like each particular cell value has a corresponding dot over here. Um, the thing that is a bit annoying of, about this is that this is slightly off the screen uh, and I want to see the entire plane and I want it to be centered. So. A pretty straight ahead way of doing that is by using uh, subtraction. So I'm going to subtract the normalized coordinates by 0 0.5. So the cool thing about working with normalized coordinates, as I said before, is that uh, it doesn't really matter what range you're working with uh, because they're normalized. The kind of like uh, scaling operations are always going to be the same. So to scale this uh, range that goes from 0 to 1 to go uh, to go from uh, minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5, we just have to subtract 0 0.5 because the minimum is now going to be the same regardless of what the input size is going to be. Um, so I can change the number of, of points that we have and the minimum is always going to be the same and the maximum is always going to be the same because these coordinates are being normalized, remember? Um, so this is a way that we can very simply draw a grid. Um, well, it's not quite a grid yet, it's just a plane with dots. Um, but we can move it around and interact with it like with any other OpenGL objects in Max, um, which is cool. Um, before I finish this video, there's only one more thing I want to add, which is what if we want the points to like expand the more I have? Um, well, there is a very related object to norm in Max, and that's the cell object. So essentially, norm is cell divided by the dimensions. Um, so if I do this, it's going to look the same as if I just connect norm. What that means is that cell is outputting the cell coordinates of the input matrix. So it's actually giving you the values of, of the matrix. So if I connect this over here, and I go to the first plane, You'll see how it's counting from 0 to 37, which is the range that I have in that matrix. And if I go to this plane, it's going to do the same. So let's change the size to something smaller. Let's change it to 4. And I'm also going to scale uh, jit.gl.mesh. A convenient thing about working with uh, jit.gl.mesh is that you'll, you still have access to all the kind of operations that you can do on gl.mesh. So if I want to scale it, I can just do it from here. I, I don't have to do it in gen. Um, so I'm going to scale it over here, and if I want it to be centered, I would have to subtract whatever it is that the middle point of my input matrix is. So I would use the dimension uh, operator that tells me what the dimensions are for the ma matrix, and I'm going to subtract the value of the cell by the halfway point of my matrix which is the same kind of thing we were doing before because 0 0.5 is the middle of 1. So in this case, instead of using a, a, a simple number like 0 0.5, we're going to dynamically calculate it depending on what the dimension is. Um, so we can now change this and we can see how it is actually expanding and it's not just growing into the same space, um, which can be cool. I'm gonna, and we can also do it independently if we want, for example, the x-axis and the y-axis to grow separately. 
So yeah, this is just a, an introduction on how to work with jit.gl.mesh and jit.gen. Uh, we still haven't worked at all with uh, the x-axis, I mean with the z-axis, so that's what I'm going to do in the next video. Uh, and there's a few things we can do with this. Um, some are going to be more straight ahead than others, so let's just see some examples of cool things that we can do with the z-axis.